All right, uh, my name's Sean Quinn. I'm Carl Sonny, Sean Lucas Shotsky. Um, uh, I always have trouble coming here because I'm totally out geeked by all of you guys. And so, like, when I like consider things geeky with my friends, like, it's nowhere near like what you guys do. So I get lost in half of these. But um, I like, in general, my hobbies are usually still pretty geeky. And I think like, you guys can relate to the fact that like, if something's really simple, it's not as much fun as if there's like some technique or something involved with it. So, uh, for instance, this is not a presentation about unions. Uh, this is actually about <laughs> bowling. So, uh, I took up bowling, um, I think about like seven months ago, and uh, my average has gone up a little bit, but I'd like to help you guys do yours. And so what's geeky about bowling is uh, a lot of it has to do with uh, math. So, between your entry angle into what's called the pocket, um, and the velocity of the ball is really what determines how well you're gonna do. Um, so, uh, we have here the optimum thing, uh, the optimum throw done by a pro with a hook ball, which is what I use, but they're expensive and whatever you have to pay for it, right? Um, you can see it comes in and you've got like this angle where it's almost like 30 degrees of entry angle at the bottom between the one and the two pocket. This is for uh, one and two pin. This is on a right hander. Um, and that entry angle is really what gives you more and more chance. So like, as they develop to better technology, you get more and more entry angle because the balls are more high tech and have uh, more uh, traction on the lane. And this entry angle allows you to really clear out the pins more efficiently than if you're going straight on. You really have to get lucky and just kind of knock alongside and every pin has to go exactly correct. It's just really hard to do. And so with the nice balls, you get a large angle due to high rev rates, due to your flicking of the wrist and uh, traction of the ball itself. Unfortunately, when you go to a uh, bowling alley and use their balls, they don't have any traction because they're plastic. They, they're designed to slide and get everyone kind of like an easy time to go and because there's a lot of technique involved when you need the, the traction ball. And so, what I need you to do when you go bowling is to maximize your entry angle and be as consistent as you can. Um, in order to maximize your entry angle, you want to go as far right as you can if you're right-handed. And it's going to be a little bit scary because you're going to like slide into like the gutter, which is kind of scary, but um, it's most important because you want to get as much angle, as I said, as possible into the pocket. Um, and when you're doing that, uh, you, when you're aiming, this is the other thing that beginners usually do wrong, is they'll look at the pins, and that's not right at all. So as you'll see on the lanes, there's dots and arrows. I personally look at the arrows because like, looking at the dots, like looking straight down, but these are much closer to you in comparison to the pins. And so your body has a much better job of fixating on your target, and you can usually hit much more consistently. The other thing about aiming is that people will try and change their arms and stay in the same place. You actually want to keep hitting that same spot and just move your feet over because if you look down, uh, bowling alleys aren't just designed to be fancy with little wooden plates everywhere. Uh, those are actually called boards, and they're consistent in each and every uh, each and every alley has consistent boards. So there's always going to be I think it's uh, 40 boards wide, and so you can move over like one or two boards because you can obviously use angle and see that uh, at the green throw right there, uh, you're going way way to the right. So you move over like I think that'd be like five boards to your right, hit the same angle, and you would hit right in the pocket. And that's exactly what you want to do. Um, the only time you would ever move your mark is if you're using a hook ball, because oil affects uh, how your ball carries down, when it's going to hook in. Like, I'll usually start way right, keep going, but as you go, your ball picks up the oil, and it gets more and more traction. You start hooking earlier, you have to move over and hook more and more, and then you get like the crazy pros that go all the way around. It's just really hard, and hard to do. <laughs> so when you're using a straight ball, you usually don't have to move at all as far as where you're aiming. Just pick somewhere that's easy and not going to gutter ball. Um, approach. Uh, you need to walk straight. That's really important. Use the boards to do that. You should end on the same board you're starting on. So in this starting on the five board, which is you count from the right over using the dots. Um, you use a four-step approach, which I illustrated with stick figures. Um, <laughs> the one, like, you, you have four steps. You start with whatever hand it is you carry the ball in, so you're right-handed. You push down at a 45-degree angle, and that's going to start a swing. A lot of beginners will try to throw the ball. It's not right. You want to pick the ball that weighs the right amount. So you just kind of drop it, and it should kind of do all the work itself. And so you just drop it down, it gets back. You don't want to put it above your shoulder and be all like cool like that because you're going to wrench and you're going to go sideways and that's not good. 
because if you go sideways like this way, you're going to release left. Um, okay, shut up. <laughs> Be smooth, have fun, that's the number one thing.